tale as old as time, song as old as rhyme, beauty and the beast. Yeah. Go on, hold your menu, take a glance and then you be our guest, we are guest, be our guest. Hey there everybody, this is 22 Tiger Dude here and I am here to review Beauty and the Beast. So Beauty and the Beast 2017 stars a whole bunch of people. You have Emma Watson, Dan Stevens, Ian McGregor, Luke Evans, Josh Gad, Kevin Kline, and the film is directed by Bill Condon who brought you the Breaking Dawn movies part one and part two and Mr. Holmes. And Beauty and the Beast is the same story Story that everyone is familiar with from the original film. Belle doesn't really exactly have friends. She spends a lot of time with her father and her father goes to this castle that the beast lives in and the beast holds the father as a prisoner unless Belle basically sacrifices herself which is to serve for the beast so that way her father can be safe. And so of course with Belle living with the beast now, the beast as, the, as she's living with him he's starting to develop feelings for Belle and with the power of love can help break the curse for him as well as the other objects. So I was of course very excited for 2017's Beauty and the Beast because I adore the animated film. I think the 1991 animated film is near perfection. I think it's a near masterpiece of an animated film. I just adore that film. It's definitely one of Disney's best anime films, hands down. And I really wanted to see what they could do here. I wanted to see them be faithful to the 1991 film, but also expand upon it because this is longer than the 1991 film after all. So not only was I looking forward to seeing the familiar material, but I was looking forward to seeing the new material. And I have to say, Beauty and the Beast 2017 is the remake I was hoping for. Let's start off with the cast, because this film has a huge, huge cast. So starting off with Emma Watson as Belle, I thought she was fantastic. I know there's some people that haven't been exactly a huge fan of her portrayal. For me personally, I thought Emma Watson really fit Belle. Not only does she fit the character of Belle, but she looks like Belle. Like, there's no other actress that I could see looking like Belle as well as Emma Watson. And to her credit, you know, she's not really much of a singer, but she actually sings very well. And I know she said in interviews how that's actually her singing. I actually bought into her singing. I thought she sang as great as she could. I also thought Dan Stevens did a very good job as the Beast. He really present the beast very well. He did capture the magic of the beast. Of course, the beast is maybe a little bit different than what you're used to seeing in the original film for sure. This beast is a little bit more emotional, you could say. He's more emotional while the beast in the original film is a little more aggressive. Uh, this beast, I thought, was portrayed very well. And although the visuals on the beast can be a little bit obvious, uh, for the most part, I actually did think that visually the Beast looked really great. Luke Evans as Gaston. Perfect casting. This guy looked like Gaston. Just from the look to the hairstyle to the way he's dressed. But he really looked like Gaston. He captured the mannerisms of Gaston so well. Josh Gad as LeFou was terrific here. He really was because honestly in the 1991 animated film when you hear the voice, when you really listen to the voice of the food, he does sound like Josh Gad. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's why Josh Gad got this part, because maybe the filmmakers, they were looking back at the 1991 animated film, they were listening to LeFou's voice in the original, and they're like, wow, he sounds like Josh Gad. He really did, so I thought there was no one else better to play this role than Josh Gad. Kevin Klein is also great as Emma Watson's father, Maurice. He really did capture just the feel 
of the father that really cares for his own daughter. I just thought Kevin Klein did a very good job. And as far as the objects go, Ian McGregor is fantastic as Lumiere. He really captures the mannerisms of his character very well. He even did do a very good he even did do a very good job singing Be Our Guest. I was really worried how that was going to go down, but he was luckily able to capture the magic of the Be Our Guest musical number from the animated film, and he did a very good job. Ian McKellen as Cogsworth was great here. I was just so happy hearing Ian McKellen's voice. It really did fit so well. And Emma Thompson as Mrs. Potts, she's wonderful here. And then this gentleman named Nathan Mack as Chip. He did a very good job in this film. And then you also have Stanley Tucci. You also have Google Mapatha Raw. I really wouldn't be surprised if I'm missing anyone. But honestly, the acting from everyone was really good. You could tell everyone on set was just having fun. They were really trying to capture the magic of the original film and that's something I have to say this film definitely succeeded at. It does a really great job of capturing the magic of the original animated film but this does expand more on the story. There's material that they do keep from the original and then there's material that they do change around a bit from the original film, but I definitely think that's what made it interesting. One of the things that I want this film not to be, I really did not want to feel like a beat by beat remake because I don't want to see the same movie but live action. I want to see new stuff and luckily they did not disappoint. Yes, you definitely do get your similar things but I felt like a good portion of the movie, like a good portion of the movie really f was different from the animated film. Like they definitely expanded more here on the romance in this one. Like that's one thing I'll say that this film does do a better job at than the animated film is that the romance is definitely more expanded. You have more time to really get into the romance between Belle and the Beast. You get to feel more of their connection. You know, you already felt it there in the original, but you just feel it more here. And not only does this film do a very good job of expanding more on the romance between Belle and the Beast, but we actually get a backstory regarding the Beast. Yes, we actually get to see the Beast's backstory, which is very tragic. And then, we also do get to learn about Belle's mother. That was actually very clever on the filmmaker's part, you know? We never really knew what happened with Belle's mother in the animated film, so for them to actually talk about Belle's mother here in the live-action remake, I honestly was very impressed with that, and I really did like how that storyline was written. And some of the changes that they do make with the film, I actually did feel worked. I could see why definitely for other people it could feel out of place, but for for the most part, I was actually fine with the changes. I was fine for what they were going because, like what I said, you don't want to feel like an exact movie. And can I just say that the production design in Beauty and the Beast is so wonderful. Like seriously, the world, this live action world literally feels like the animated film. Whoever was in charge of the sets and the green screen, all of that, like huge props to them because you can really tell they want to give you that magic and they definitely absolutely deliver with that magic. And then of course the musical numbers in this film, they are really great. And most of the choreography when we get to these musical numbers are just so wonderful. And I know it sounds like I'm maybe repeating myself, but it really does capture the feel of the original. Just seeing them in live action form were so wonderful. Just so spectacular, just so magical and definitely pure escapism like it's definitely one of those movies where you watch to forget about your problems and it's so magical that i actually feel like i am in this magical world the score the look of the movie all of that is just really something to praise and bill condon he did a wonderful job directing this film you could feel the passion through his direction you could just feel the heart the care and the way he's able to replicate some of the shots from the original film is just so 
wonderful. And honestly, for this being a two hour and nine minute long movie, I actually thought it was a very well paced movie. I didn't find myself uh, bored watching this film, to be honest. Even when the film does slow down, I never found myself bored. I always found myself engaged in this world. Now, as far as problems do go with Beauty and the Beast, I will say that the singing wasn't always the best like I did feel like the singing sometimes not all the time sometimes I did feel like the singing was just a little out of place I felt like the choreography even once in a while felt a little bit iffy to me personally there are a few changes in the film that I was iffy on as well like I could see why maybe they change a certain element of the film from the original animated film, you know, and you know, that's nice because they don't want you to feel like you're watching the same exact movie, but there are a few changes where I was sitting there going, yeah, that didn't exactly w work for me. There's one in particular in the climax dealing with Gaston and, you know, those that have seen the original film know what I'm talking about. But there's a certain choice the filmmakers uh, make regarding Gaston when, you know, he's up in the castle with the beast. That's all I'm going to say from there. And I said this earlier when I brought up the beast, but there were times where I did think that the visuals were just a little too obvious on him. And it does take a while to get used to him when the movie opens, but as the movie progresses and progresses, the look of the beast really doesn't bother me anymore. Overall, Beauty and the Beast 2000. 2017 is one of my personal favorite movies of the year so far. This is by far the remake I wanted from the 1991 original film. It captures the magic, it has the feel, it gives you the familiar material you want to see, but it also adds new material to make it not feel like a complete copy and paste movie, which I definitely appreciated. The production design is fantastic. The direction by Bill Condon is just marvelous, seriously, seriously marvelous, and the casting choices on each and every one of these characters cannot be any more impressive. I still really love the musical numbers, even the new ones that they added here. I forgot to mention that the new musical numbers I did really like. As far as how it compares to the animated film, it is not quite on par, but it's pretty close. Like, this is the animated film, and Beauty and the Beast 2017 is right there. Just the flaws I mentioned do keep it from being on par with the animated film, but that still does not take away from how much I loved Beauty and the Beast 2017. And I am going to give Beauty and the Beast 2017 three and a half out of four stars. So you guys, in the comments down below, let me know what you think about 2017's Beauty and the Beast and how did it live up to the 1991 original film for you? Was it on par? Was it not, not quite on par? Was it really disappointing compared to the original? Did it live up to your expectations? I honestly do want to know. I'd be very, very curious to know what you guys think. This is 22 Tiger Dude here, and don't forget that I will always have Tiger Power!